that makes it sound more exciting when we're not on YouTube than it actually is, doesn't it? Forever. This is a long time. <laughs> right, we're now live. Okay, welcome everybody to tonight's planning meeting. Um, is there anybody here for the public session? No. Nope. Oh, thank you. Okay, so item one is selection of chair. As I promised last year, I would step aside to let Councillor Colby chair this year. Um, he's done two years as vice chair and he's been a wonderful vice chair. So I think it's only fitting that he is proposed this year as promised and, um, and he goes in full glory as chair of planning for the coming year. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Harvey. I saw your hand go first. Um, right, is there any other uh, proposers for chair? No? Okay, Mark, over to you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. <laughs> thank you. If I could just first of all say to Lisa, thank you so much, Lisa, for the last two years. You, you've done a wonderful job steering the planning committee, and um, yeah, yeah. we have definitely moved on a lot in the town since that time. Thank you, thank you so much for that. Thank um, you, Mark. If I could just hand back to you for a moment, Lisa, election of vice chair. Yep. Yeah. So, election of vice chair. I would like to propose Councillor Ralph. Um, he did ask last year if he could be vice chair, but I'd uh, promised Mark. So again, I promised this year, <laughs> as I'm stepping aside, um, he could be vice chair this year. So do I have a seconder? I take Councillor Stutchbury's hand as being the first. Yeah, it would be my greatest pleasure to second Anthony. You, Rick. He's been uh, avid attender of these committee meetings and adds yeah. great value to every meeting he attends. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, is there any other proposals? Oh, sorry, Mark. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll do that bit. Uh, any other proposals? Well, we have a proposer and seconder for Councillor Anthony Ralph. All those in favour? Don't need to. It's unanimous. Thank you, Anthony. I look forward to working with you over the next year. Thank, Thank you, you very yeah. much. Um, item three on the agenda, clarification of the status of this meeting, a verbal report from our town clerk, Paul Hodson. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, yeah, just to remind members that the full council voted and agreed for the committee, with the, along with other committees, to change its status to become a working group. So tonight's meeting is of a working group which doesn't have the formal power to make decisions, uh, but decisions will be delegated to myself and to the planning clerk, um, particularly on responses, as we'll do with all of the other meetings. That means we can meet online. Councillors can vote and discuss things online as it's a less formal meeting. We'll carry on with the agendas and chairing. We're still going to sit under standing orders in the Code of Conduct. Uh, it doesn't affect the calendar of meetings. It does mean that meetings are now on YouTube and saved on YouTube afterwards in the way they were before. Thank you. That's a try. Is there a a, a set of wording that we have to use when we agree something like we re we recommend this to the town clerk to action that's exactly the wording i would recommend yes <laughs> <laughs> obviously as the town clerk said at the council meeting which the staff helpfully put together uh, it, uh, we must thank them for that this will be under review at every council meeting anyway so I think this is a temporary measure why the world moves forward, hopefully in a good direction. So I have no problem. I think we should still agree. And then when the chairman should then say um, the, the committee recommends um, do it that way. So there's no confusion of the wording. Uh, we agree. And the chairman could then recommend big decisions would probably be a, a, a neater way of doing it. Thank you very much for that. Anyone else? Uh, thank you, Paul, then, for that advice, which we will obviously follow. Um, item four, apologies for absence. Nina, anybody? I don't have any apologies recorded. Uh, the, the one I have is apologies from Councillor Ma, he, who will be late to the meeting. Oh, he's just coming in now. <laughs> I'll just wait till he's there. Hi, Andy. <laughs> Good evening, Andy. Councillor Mahi has just joined the meeting. Um, we're just doing apologies for absence, um, Andy. So you've you just made it in time. 
Thank you. Um, item five, declarations of interest. To receive any declarations of personal or prejudicial interest under consideration on this agenda. Uh, mm -hmm. Councillor Stutchbury. Just to declare that I'm most likely to be doing planning. So I declare that as an interest of the Buckinghamshire Councillor and so that it's noted in my comments that when I don't comment, it's not because I'm not interested, it's because I have a predetermined position and I don't want to prejudice that on behalf of the, the Town Council. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stutchbury. And Robin, on behalf of the Planning Committee, congratulations on being uh, re-elected to Buckinghamshire Council and uh, yep. well, you will look after our interests. You'd be assured. <laughs> Uh, minutes of the last meeting. These, this is Monday, 19th of April. It was put before the full council, um, but I had raised um, a correction and they were coming back to us anyway for approval. On page four of the minutes, um, Buckingham Neighbourhood Plan, Vale as well, the plan report. I reported right at the end of that um, that we were, um, that it was. I proposed it was seconded by Councillor Stutchbury and agreed for the committee to work with Maids Morton and Foscott Parish Councils on a joint submission to Buckinghamshire Council, insisting that the Section 106 application is not signed. That shouldn't read application, that should, receive, should read Section 106 legal agreement for Maids Morton 006 Walnut Drive, just to be absolutely clear. Is everyone happy with that? Yeah. Absolutely. That accordingly, then those minutes will go back to the next council for full approval. Councillor Stutchbury? Any mute. updates on those procedures which can be discussed tonight or are they something which need to be discussed elsewhere? Thank on, you. on that application and the work of the um, Mays Morton Action Group, is there something we need to know or is it going to be discussed elsewhere? No, I, it, it has gone further than that now, and I think probably if I could ask Carolyn just to tell us where, where you've got to on that, Carolyn. Yes, um, well, we had a letter from um, Sue Pilcher saying that the agreement won't be signed without a draft copy being put before uh, this your council, the Buckingham Town Council and indeed made Morton Parish Council, uh, which we will have 10 days with which to comment. And we look at the website every day to make sure that it's not on the website, because when it goes on the website, you will have 10 days to comment. Um, the only other update I think perhaps you might be interested to know is the documentary has now had over 6,000 views. Mm. And um, many, a lot of interest from other residents groups who have been experiencing very similar, if not the same problems, not just with Buckinghamshire, but with other councils um, within the country and and we are in the process of drafting a letter which will be on behalf of all residents groups in Bucks to outline what we feel this planning uh, department should be about and not uh, ignoring uh, local views and and working with communities rather than with developers. Mm. Thank you Carolyn. Uh, Councillor Harvey? Uh, that's an innovation if they're going to share with us the section 106 agreement in draft form before yeah. it gets formally signed i think we should thank buckinghamshire council profusely for that um, and do whatever else we can do to reward that behavior so that it happens again and again and again mm -hmm. um i think that's a very positive thing yeah be great yeah thank you councillor stutchbridge uh, only to say that I was in a meeting earlier tonight and and what's gone on in Maysville and has not, not been recognised in other parts of Buckinghamshire. Um, that it, yeah, it has been noted and I think there's some synergies on these concerns and the way such actions are taken across Buckinghamshire. Uh, you are not alone. Um, I can assure you of that. I will um, say no more than that now, but I... I think you'll find you're not alone. I think Carolyn said that, yeah. Thank you for that, Robin. Fine. Um, are we happy for the minutes then? All those in favour? Yeah. Thank you. Moving on then, item seven, Buckingham Neighbourhood Plan, Vale of Aylesbury Plan. Um, Catherine has...
provided you a written report, which is conjoined to my report I gave to the committee last time um, over the two days of hearings. Uh, thank you very much for that, Catherine. They go, you go into much greater detail, and obviously I did at the time. One of the main items on that, of course, was the fact that they, uh, the Buckinghamshire Council sprang on the meeting, particularly on the Mace Norton working group, that um, the Section 106 agreement was about to be signed, and that caused all that triggered all this flurry of activity, which uh, we've been talking about. But bas basically, the inspector has now gone away to think about what we've all told him. I did put my presentation to his assistant in writing, and she's acknowledged that and, um, and thanked us, thank Buckingham Town Council for its contribution to the modification hearings. Uh, Councillor Harvey? Yeah, do we have any idea when the inspector is going to, I don't know, make his final decision um, with regards to VALP? I mean, we seem to be, we seem to have been in the last chance saloon for a very, very, very long time now. Uh, yeah. I remember, I think I was taking bets about whether VALP would be accepted by um, um, March of last year. And I think I won that one. Um, <laughs> so it would be nice to know, do we have any idea of the schedule ahead? He did indicate to the second day of the hearings that it would be a few uh, several months before he could come up with the complete uh, plan he has, he has so much to go through and he also indicated he's also doing another um local plan so i think between the two of them he's trying to trying to rush everything through councillor stutchbury i think for you chairman as this unwinds either to determination in favor of the vow plan or um, the vow plan being dismissed by the inspector, I think it would be well worth um, us looking back at the lost opportunities which were given the vow plan, the timeline of those lost opportunities, and and it's still the very things which still resonate in my mind that when there was opportunity to amend the vow plan to put thirty five percent in affordable, they chose to vote it down, and the mm -hmm. other thing with Ozzy Way. When it was changed from industrial to indu from industrial to housing, plus the simple fact that it, it 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 removes areas in the town plan, and it basically disregarded the town plan and everything. But I think we need to, when we make a response to it, we need to make sure that we bring all those facts and details, and happenings and decisions, and recommendations of this council, into full. Um, bearing when we actually make a comment on it because it will be presented a fluffy, a fluffy thing which has been existing since 2014 which has finally come to life and it's really um, from part two of Buckingham it's been quite retrograde and socially regressive we could suggest um, especially on affordable housing so I think we need to look at it as it goes along and discuss it at length, but make sure our comments includes all these missed opportunities, um, including the Mays Morton development and, and the Mays Morton road development and the things which it's actually suggested doing, countenance against public opinion. And that's been a theme with the Vale Plan all along. It's been countenance against local opinion. And that's been a, that's been it's, but it's, it's been no addressing of that, even though you could sell from our previous councillor Hirons did try to do your darndest to actually get those things discussed. Many of them are never discussed. And, and that is, if it goes through for approval without people's voices actually being heard at the table, it, it's, a, it's a sour affair, a sour affair, um, in my view. Yeah, I think, thank you, Councillor Stutchby. I, I, we've gone as far as we can at the moment. We had, um, one and a half full days of um, our presentations and our, what we're saying against or in favour of the plan. The first first morning was taken up by the Maids Morton Walnut Drive plan. The second morning was taken up by that. And then the Buckingham transport strategy took up the Friday afternoon. So we did have one and a half days. The, the inspector certainly heard us i think we did this time get our money's worth i'm sure carolyn will agree with that but you know there's not much more we could say everyone was heard this time even though he was trying to hurry it up a little bit as we got to six o'clock on the friday night but um 
he showed more staying power this time than he did in July 2018. And, and I, I feel from Buckingham Town Council's point of view that we were heard fairly. Carolyn, did, did you feel that you got your money's worth? Yeah, yes, I, I certainly did. I think he was at, um, took some trouble to make sure that we were fully heard. Um, whether that's a good thing or not, we'll wait to see. But I don't, we can't complain that, we, that our voices were not heard. In fact, the only thing was Susan Ornsby, the QC president, tried to sort of cut us off at one point, but he wouldn't have any of it. So good, good for the inspector. Yeah. Mr. Stutchbury? I, I can concur with what you said about that hearing, but nevertheless, the affordability numbers never got discussed and they weren't discussed now. So we've got all the way to the end of the our plan, possibly getting agreement with only 25% affordable in what is the prime development area, according to Whitehall. Um, and that is going to be a, um, a burden the next generation for the foreseeable future to the Buckinghamshire plan comes into action. Um, it's a developer's charter, really, isn't it? And, and, and you did your best, and it's no criticism of you, Chairman, but that never got to, never got to be discussed, and and it's that's why it's socially regressive. Thank you, Councillor Stutchbury. Yes, in fact, the, regarding the affordable housing, um, we did before the, hit, the these amendments ask modifications ask again if we could be heard, and the answer came back no. And during the hearings, the inspector also refused to hear any presentations whatsoever on the healer figures he said that was done and dusted as far as he was concerned and he was only interested in in what was on the table before him so we we had no no chance to expand on that um anyone else got any comments on that catherine thank you very much for the report some um, uh, very, very helpful i think we need to keep that as a model and move that into our next meeting of the uh, neighborhood plan so that we, we can draw on a lot of those comments that were made thank you um, item eight. Action. Chairman, can I just raise sorry one point on the neighbourhood plan? Uh, just to note that that we did have the working group for the neighbourhood plan booked in to meet this Wednesday. We're going to have to postpone that for a couple of weeks to find a date that's convenient for all members of the group now. But we'll we'll confirm that to you by email. I think we're going to be pretty busy on Wednesday now, aren't we? With the town meeting. Um, Thank you. Um, item eight then, which is action reports. Um, that should actually read eight one and eight two, not seven one and seven two. Um, is there anything on there anyone you know, wishes to comment on? No, everyone happy with that? Um, okay, thank you for that, Catherine. Um, Matt, oh, um, can, John Harvey's got a hand. Yep. Just one thing, I wondered what's happening about the questions for the uh, that we talked about for the um, consultation. Well, that they're for a uh, final discussion at the working group when the working oh, group is right. Okay, yeah. thank you. Anything else? No, item eight two then, um, to agree a Buckingham Town Council representative for the North Bucks planning. A parishes planning consortium east west rail group this is a group that's been put together by the NBPPC. um jeff culverhouse asked it's asked all parishes if they are interested in joining the group and if so could we please appoint a representative councillor harvey can i politely inquire whether sue would be interested in, in that given that you're probably closer to it than anybody else on this committee uh, physically, obviously. Um, just a thought. Councillor Hetherington, welcome to the committee, by the way, and congratulations on, on your election. Thank you. I'm not actually a member of this committee. Um, I don't know if that would permit me to be on this um, East West Rail. Have you thought about joining it? Um, <laughs> I think, as you say, we do have a, a great deal of issues um in the in the Gorka area with east west rail um so i th i would be interested and just just to sorry if i may chair just to clarify that it's not essential to be a member of a committee to take that appointment but obviously somebody taking the appointment we would be kind of expected to at least report back to the committee on any particular items of interest Indeed. are you saying yes you would be happy to 
do that then? Yes. Uh, could yes. you second for that then, please, if Councillor Harvey's proposing it? I, I think Robin's got a hand, I think, at the moment as well. Councillor Stutchbury? I'm quite happy to second that. I know um, from our conversations, Sue and I have talked about many issues to do with it. something that she will bring a, a lot of enlightenment to this subject. Uh, she's got a, a a really good understanding of the impacts of it, uh, and I think she'll add some of it. So I'll second her on that basis that I think she'll bring something really fresh to the table, something we haven't heard. Thank you. And any other proposals for that position? No? In that case, I think um just like to indicate by hand that everyone's in favour of that. Yeah, that appears to be unanimous, Paul. So, Sue, thank you very much indeed. And, uh, Thanks, Sue. <laughs> that's that one done. Good, that brings us to item nine, planning application. Um, Sorry, uh, Catherine. Can I just draw members' attention to the last item on the action list on page two, which I had had as a separate item and the Crown Clerk has snuck in at the bottom of my action list. <laughs> the action list. Thank you, Catherine. Oh, yeah. I have, I, I have to write back to this lady, so I'd like a, a decision from the committee on it. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I, which which what, which one are we looking at? It's the Lace Hill Care Home. We we wanted to change the name. They don't like what we suggested. Oh, they oh, they suggested yeah. Lace Hill Manor. Yeah, the, the last item on the action list. Yeah, yeah. Councillor Harvey. I, I, they've not rejected Lace Hill Manor, have they? No, they have suggested Lace Hill Manor. I think go for that. I think that sounds yeah. good. Okay, we'll agree yeah. that then. Everyone happy? happy? Good, thank you. Thank you, Catherine. So item nine, planning applications. Um, Catherine has put together her suggestions and comments on these applications. If we start with number one, which is 25 Hilltop Avenue. This is on Page Hill. It's a two-storey side extension, park garage conversion, dropped curb, and crossover to a new parking area. This is actually an amendment to an approval we'd, all, we'd already raised no objection to. Um, it would mean having a loss of their front lawn by that you having put another parking space in the front there. Um, Councillor Try, and then Councillor O'Donoghue. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, I don't have any objections to the building work uh, as is. What I do object to is the further extension to the drop curb um, and the spacing of their cars, as you have just said, um, removes that very small amount of um, green area uh, there anyway. And also, I think by the drop curb, they then become almost the owners of that little piece of road in front of them, which means nobody else can park along that road, um, you know, because of the drop curb. So I would object to that. And, and I think there's enough room looking at the uh, picture, um, the realistic picture, that they can get three cars on there anyway. I mean, they just have to squeeze up. And that will keep the greenery, it will keep the drainage, and it will keep um, some of the road curbing as well. Thank you, Martin. Um, Lisa? Thank you. Um, yeah, I kind of agree with what Martin said about the car pocket spaces, but the greenery, it looks like it's on their land. I could be wrong, but it looks like part of their front garden. So if they want to do away with that, I think that's up to them. Um, I don't have an issue with the application. I think that it's... Um, it's fine as it stands. So happy to recommend we agree this one. Thank you, John. Well, I mean, unless they've got three vehicles, they won't be using it anyway. They're probably trying to extend that to ensure there's adequate parking spaces for the newly sized house that will be there. Frankly, I don't have, I think there's room if you had a book. Well, if you're on Lay City, they'd have less than that anyway, wouldn't you? But yeah. um, I mean, I think there's adequate space there for three, three vehicles if they wish to choose to do that. Uh, but I suspect they're not going to go out and just buy another car just to park it on their newly enlarged um, parking space, unless they're going to buy a camper van like I did. But, you know, um, uh, but yeah, I've done a problem with this. Well, it might be two adults and then a, a, a teenager who's just learned to drive. We don't, we don't. Mm. Councillor Ralph. Thank you, Chair. Um, just could we make a note on it that we'd like to see it's a permeable surface 
Mm. They make an extension. And, and this is a sort of thing perhaps we can put on any of uh, our future um, views so that it's a standard item on on how the town feel about it. Yeah. And is, is, is a drainage channel um, that now mandatory, Catherine? I don't think it's mandatory, and I have a feeling, I mean, I took that photograph almost a month ago now, but I think that the ground actually slopes towards the garages, so it's not going to go onto the road anyway. Right, okay. Um, Ka uh, Carolyn. Thank you. Yes, um, we definitely felt that the surface should be permeable, and I did get in touch with the owner. They're intending to put block paving there, and I think that's not very permeable. It would be good if we could have it designed in some shape or form that at least it drains into a hedgerow perhaps between 25 and the neighbour and I don't think it drains to the garage as I remember it because I have been there um, and I thought it drained into the road and I'm sure they will be draining into the road. Well, in that case, I mean, they're going to follow highways regulations. So if it's going to drain that way, highways will insist on a, a slatted thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I, I think the principle of permeable surfaces for driveways is something that um, the, the society would like to see, certainly. Thank you. Now, uh, Councillor Tri did actually propose that we objected to it on the grounds of the, um, the extent extending the uh, drop curve, which means that it would preclude anyone else from parking in front of the property. Um, is there a seconder for that? No. What's the feeling of the meeting then? That, that we approve, approve, approve the application, but with the rider that um, there should be permeable surface for the parking. Yeah, I propose that we agree this one. Okay. Everyone in favour? Thank you. Anyone against? One against. Any abstentions? One abstention. Thank you, Councillor Stutchbury. Thank you. Um, item two is 32 Nelson Street. This is the former Royal Oak Public House. It's a Grade Two listed building. Um, we asked. We sent it back, saying there wasn't enough information. Heritage agreed with us, and Heritage at Aylesbury actually want more information still. They want further investigations and a comprehensive justification for any potential harm through loss of historic fabric and plan form. And also they want an amended proposal for the front door flood barrier. Um, so at the moment, we, we I don't know if anyone has any feelings about the actual internal works, but um, it's possible that you know we might agree to that as, as long as they comply with what the heritage officer wants. Councillor Harvey. I, I think you've said it, Chair. I mean, I think if they comply with what the heritage officer says, I don't see a problem with any of this, frankly. Thank you. Anyone else? Councillor Don, here for you. Did you want to speak or are you just reaching? No, I was just I was turning my iPad back up because okay. I had a phone call, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So is is that the feeling of the meeting then that we um we we don't you know we have no no problems with this so long as the heritage officer um, yeah. is following. Thank you for that. Um, item three, land at Tingewick Road, St Rumbold's Fields. This is a variation of condition on a number of the houses there. Um, Barrett David Wilson have not been able to obtain some of the materials they wanted to do this job, and so there are some colour changes there. Mm. Anyone have any comment on that? Councillor Harvey? This is going to make quite a difference, I think, if, if I've understood it correctly, looking at the plan that, that you've reproduced, Catherine, that means quite a few houses on the horizon. Um, will show up with red roofs in a way that may be out of kilter with a large other parts of of the town. We don't really have many houses with 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 that sort of colour roofs. And if you're going, if you're driving back along the Brackley Road towards town, you will see those roofs from that road if you're looking south. Um, so I, 
I struggle to understand that they can't find roof tiles that aren't a bit more in keeping with the town, frankly. Um, did the Buckingham Society have a view on this, Carolyn? I have to say we felt so fatigued by all the variations of this, that and the other coming back from David Wilson Holmes, we rather threw up our hands and congratulated Catherine on the, on the excellent report that she's done as normal. Um, I think there are red tile roofs in, in, in the town, but I totally agree with Councillor Harvey, actually, the point he makes that it's going to be very visible from the Brackley Road and um, probably at that on that position, those those red tiles will stand out more than slate. Um, but uh, we didn't actually have any particular views on it. Um, Catherine, could we just ask what, what they were going to be replacing? Did you mention something about a blue tile? Well, if you look on page six of the report, you will see that they did have three colours, a grey and an orange, and a sort of brown mm. and now they're going to add this red one in where they're um, not being able to source enough tiles right. but they're still keeping with the grey and the orange and the brown thank you councillor try uh, thank you could they not just use all the red ones on the smaller estate extension and then that will be a way. Then it just groups them all together. Then you've got a, you know, a, um, a, a, a group of red roofs then. I don't I see why they've scattered them. I think this is part of the problem that we've tried to avoid having groups of colours. You know, they, yeah. they want things spread out a little bit more. Councillor O'Donnor here. Thank you. Um, I mean, the UK is known to rain a lot and with that grey comes to mind so this might give a bit of like a Mediterranean feel a bit of a warmth to the town um, by being like terracotta and red and it might bring a bit of life um, you know grey and um, slate slab brown are a bit dull um, so I, I'm quite happy with the changes <laughs> Thank you everyone so what would, how do you like to go with this? Agree. Agreed? Yes. Any, do we need a vote on this? Is anyone against it? No, we, we'll agree as it is. Thank you very much, everyone. I have to say... Uh, obviously, I'll abstain, Chairman. Yeah, oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, but I'm sure Nina will note that everything you'll be abstaining on. Thank you so much. Um, just, just to say, really, about the Rumbold um, development that you know, we have had a very good ongoing relationship with um, Barrett David Wilson, and um, they do come back to us with every little thing, which is why, you know, every detail they come back to us. So that, that, that is much appreciated. Yeah. Um, application number four is number two, Ren Close, um, which is on the, the bottom of Badgers opposite Borton Mill. Um, this is regarding, it's a retrospective application for a fence which is 2.3 metres high, which goes against our town um, guide of 1.8 metres. Catherine? It's not that end of um, Badger's Way, it's the bypass end at the south. As you come in from the, the southern bypass, it's slap bang facing you. My apologies for that. So you can see the pictures before and after. Thank you, um, Councillor Ralph, for your photograph taken in February and below is how it was in 2009 which of course is now 12 years ago but um, you can see there's a, there is a big difference and the house next door to it has also raised its fence during that period. So what do members feel? Councillor Ralph? Uh, well as I um sort of obviously noted it and it's passed through it does seem somewhat oppressive and it doesn't comply with our uh, with our requirements um and it requires planning permission and that's what it's going to get thank you councillor try um i was going to say the opposite actually you know considering it's there on a t-junction um uh, maybe the fence is not the best with the concrete um, pillars in between. Um, 
and uh, not as well painted as it was at the beginning, which would um, maybe tone it down a little bit. But um, I don't have a problem with it myself. Thank you. Anyone else want to speak on this? So are you making a proposal, Councillor Ralph, that we oppose it on the grounds of the height? Yes, I think, I think so, yes. Could I have a seconder for that? Yeah, seconder, Councillor Harvey. Thank you. Let's put that to the vote then. All those um, oppo opposing it? One, two, three, four, five. Those against? One, two, against. Abstentions? Councillor Stutchbury, thank you. So that is carried. We, we do oppose that then. Is, do we want, is that an oppose and attend if necessary? Mm. It's up to members to decide whether it's worth, by then it might be a trip down to Aylesbury. <laughs> For the sake of offence. <laughs> well, yeah. that's, that's exactly it. Is, is it worth the, uh, the trip to Aylesbury because um, you know, we're going back to having proper meetings? Then planning committees, where, I mean, there isn't a planning committee until the end of June, so by then we should have a decision either way. Yeah. Councillor Ralph? I think the fact that um, uh, it, it's required to have planning permission, whether it gets it or not, I think is sufficient. Um, I, I'm, I'm of the opinion, following on from what Catherine has said, that we've got to be careful not to bring trivial things to oppose and attend and save that as a big gun when it's really, really important. So we just oppose it then. Everyone happy with that? Thank you very much. Application number five is number nine Westfields. This is the first floor rear extension, ground floor front and side extension. You've seen the photographs in Catherine's um, document that there, this part of the Buckingham has seen a lot of change over the years. So there's no actual street seen to be spoiled now. Um, it all, all looks quite good to be piggled in, but I think the feeling generally would be that this won't make much difference. What do members think? Yeah. Is everyone happy with that? Uh, sorry, Lisa. Yeah, I'm just going to say that um, I think this is fine and happy to agree it. Thank you. So no objections to that one. Um, number six, this is the only application we have tonight that has not had um, a statutory notice put up yet. So it will be subject to uh, comments mm -hmm. coming in after our meeting tonight. It's Wilmore in Stratford Road. This is the lay-by at the top of Stratford Road, uh, quite close to the bus stop. Um, it's a part single story and part first floor rear extensions and replacement lean-to roof. It is a detached house and this is all behind it. Semi-detached. Semi I'm sorry, semi-detached. I do apologise, yeah. What the members feel about this one? Uh, Lisa? Yeah, I think they've got the space up there, Chairman. So happy to agree this one. Thank you. Everyone agreed that? Thank you. Um, and then amended plans. Number seven is 57 Burley Peace and 17 Pitchford Walk. This is the um, takeaway and shop in Linden Village. We already said we were, had no opposition to the former plans. They've now address and description corrected it. Vehicle outlines added to rear yard on site plan and a pitch roof rather than a flat roof. Catherine did point out in her comments it's got a very strange angle in it, but that may not be a planning reason to oppose it. What do members think of that one? Yeah, I think we can with that, our original no objections. Fine, so we continue with that, no objections? Yeah. Um, not for consultation, eight and nine. This is uh, Chua House. This is purely an upstairs um, change of use with some internal alterations only. Um, it's an application for a lawful development certificate as well. Does anyone see any problem with that? No, not at all. Thank you. 
no objections to that. Um, the number 10 has been approved already. This is a removal of a spruce in at 11 Chandos Road. Um, there's a number of tree applications there, which some of us were replied to by email. The one that continued to give concern was number 14. That was the maple tree in Cromwell Court um, and Foscott Way. This it was a, one of a group of four. They, the insurers of the house had applied for three of them because of uh, suggested damage, alleged damage to the property. They forgot to apply for permission for the fourth. Um, everyone replying by email came back and said, no, they, they missed it too late. But mm -hmm. Neil Passmore, who's the tree officer for Buckinghamshire Council, came back and said that basically he's, he's, we have to do that because otherwise the council could be laid open to all sorts of um, in insurance implications and claims. So that has been approved uh, against our wishes. Councillor Harvey? I do think with this, this, this needs looking into. I've said this before. I yes. think insurance companies, are, and I think this is maybe something we can approach NELP about because I'm mm -hmm. very worried that insurance companies are taking easy way out, easy ways out here, mm -hmm. maybe just seem to be doing something, but I'm not sure that it'll actually solve the problem because we know what the problem is on Page Hill. It's more to do with the geology than it is to do with the tree roots. Um, and, I, and I just wonder whether we could make some contact with Nauk and find out if this is a growing problem, that somehow insurance companies have kind of hooked into this and are just destroying trees all over the shop because Honestly, I, I think the distance the way the distance between the tree and the house, I mean, you know, normally when you look at a tree, the root roots go as sort of far and wide as the tree itself does, in other words, it's kind of like a mirror image, which means that the roots that are getting into, you know, as, as far as they are wide on the tree above are very, very small roots and probably are doing no damage at all and, and probably won't go any, any damage because the tree is not going to grow that much more. I just, I just worry that this is a trend that we've got to somehow stop. Let's just make the point. Item fifteen tonight is about this an application to sell trees and to consider proposals that Council Ralph's put forward. So if we could, well, we can discuss that tonight, Councillor Harvey, if that's right with you. Thank you, Councillor Stutchbury. I think for you, Chairman, we had we had agreed earlier um, last year that we were going to start cataloging these type of applications because there is a, a challenge isn't there to the broader environment mm. and the fact that we are um, that the policy of Buckinghamshire Council is to plant presumably 500,000 trees um, which taking these trees out through planning seems to be running contrary to what they sound their environmental policies so I think we need to gauge how we approach this in the long run because if this becomes an easy option as been suggested by both yourself and Councillor Harvey that that they keep going down this route the skyline of Buckingham will change um, over over 10 years the place that it actually is now will, will, will be gone because you could use these arguments presumably, for any tree. It's rather like the arguments for demonstrations now, that if you make a noise, someone can claim that you're spoiling their day and you can be prosecuted. So I think we do need to write to them and ask them for the legal framework that they're operating in as a council. Uh, uh, what resilience they're putting into that in keeping with their own agreed policies on the environment. Because if they're not operating in line with their own recommendations to council, which they've agreed in the last cycle, then they shouldn't be doing it. So I think we have to ask them, um, is, it in, is it in breach of their own environmental policies? Because this argument is going to go on and on and on and on. It won't be the last time we get an application like this. And eventually, um, some trees of significant note in the town will be the next ones to go. And um, so better to ask these questions now so we can throw them back at them at a later date. 
Yeah, if I could just reiterate Councillor Stutchby, that is what item 15 tonight is about, about asking what the criteria is, et cetera, et cetera. So um, if we could deal with that then. Councillor O'Donoghue. Thank you. It does feel a little bit like Groundhog Day because everything that Councillor Harvey and Stutchbury have said tonight has been said in previous meetings, probably by Councillor Harvey and Councillor Stutchbury. Um, and we have already started noting what trees are being removed. It was something that I asked for um, meetings back. So it is. we are keeping a record of them, gentlemen. Um, I know that Catherine is doing that and we were having it on the agendas so it is being noted and we definitely need to keep an eye on the ball because it is a massive problem. And it seems clear from um, what Neil Passmore has said is that they're then afraid of insurance companies claiming against the council. So they're not really thinking about the environmental as aspect when they're thinking about money. If that's what their issue is here, is that they're worried about being sued because they're not keeping or maintaining the trees that they've got in town. That isn't our fault, that isn't the householder's fault, um, but the environment is gonna suffer because of it. So um, yeah, I'm glad it's on the agenda again tonight, but it does feel a bit like Groundhog Day. Thank you, Councillor Harvey. Well, yes, obviously I've mentioned this before, but I think it is a new thing to say, I think we ought to ask NELC, our national body, as yeah. to this is a growing thing. I don't think I've said that bit before. But my, I remain concerned, and obviously I note that we are keeping an eye on this. Yeah, I'll support that, John. You data. haven't said that before. And I think, and I think we should be trying to link up with other parish and town councillors or other authorities to see what they're doing about this. Because, as I say, this is a yeah. trend that I worry is happening across the country. Um, maybe contact the, I don't know, the insurance body or the representative professional body for insurance companies and say, are they having discussions? And have they mm -hmm. thought about the environmental impact as well? It's not a very green thing. It's not a very no. carbon neutral thing to be doing, cutting down trees. Could I just say once more, this is on me <laughs> later tonight. <laughs> we could do that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Um, yeah, so there's a pre-application request for comments, num item number 17. This is the highway verge at Gorkot Road roundabout. They want to put a, a base station and you've seen Catherine's report I'm sure with the pictures of uh, quite comprehensive documents and pictures of what it would look like they need this because they can't share the current one there at the moment and it's going to be quite high but it will be well clear as you can see from the plan well clear of the road of the footpaths and um, not in a not in a dangerous place for traffic um, this is a pre-application request but might be as good a time as any to make any comments anyone wants. No? Is everyone happy with that? We will get that before us again, obviously. So. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you for that. Um, item 10, planning decisions. You'll note there that um, number of decisions that we didn't object to have been approved. One of them, which I think is of concern to us, is to Chandos Close, the erection of a fence to boundary. Uh, we just saw the one for Wren Close tonight. Um, we opposed the erection of a fence at the boundary to two Chandos Close on the fact it was over 1.8 metres, it was 2.2 metres. We made a number of planning objections to it. ABDC policy GP35 and merging policy BE2 of VALP. The planning officer came back, um, ignored what we'd said. She said it met all their policies, DH, E2 and E5, which were about ecology and biodiversity. Um, as far as GP35, she said it does not go against respecting the complement, complementary site and tradition, etc. And she completely ignored our thing about BE2. Um, it's it's of concern that because everything we put forward as planning reasons she she ignored and put a num number of her own in and I just wonder if this might be a view of the future for us. Okay, no comment. Thank you. Right, um, item eleven: Buckinghamshire Council members to receive news of Buckingham Council new documents and other information 
from council members present. Um, Councillor Stutchbury, I don't see any other Buckinghamshire <laughs> councillors here tonight. I, I, it's a shame that they've missed their opportunity, haven't they? Um, <laughs> just to inform you, I came out of a meeting tonight. Um, I should be working with a group called Impact Alliance um, in Buckinghamshire Council. It's uh, It will be a group of 13 councillors, a baker's dozen. Um, we have got councillors pretty much everywhere um, over Bucks and Set Aylesbury, unfortunately. Um, but um, we will probably be uh, priming ourselves on areas of environment, areas of planning, um, such like on, on a scrutiny basis. And we will be able to cover all the social committees within our group. Um, that group is a, a irregular group with no um, whip, no standing orders, in the sense that we are not operating along normal party lines where every one person says something and none of the others can talk about it. Um, with such a strong uh, membership from independent councillors, it's, it's only right that many of them reflected on real issues to do with their area that they can actually express themselves. We will be involved in strategic development control and we will be uh, involved in planning. So, but I mean, it's a new day. I come out of a group meeting tonight. It was one of the easiest meetings I've ever been to with a group of eight people. Um, there was more about what we can do, not what you can't say. And and we, it, it, it's, it's, it's going to be there. They will make contact with various people, be societies and um, parish count and town councils, because we're not primarily there to be, uh, we're they're there to be the people's friend and, and that's our purpose is to take up issues and represent where we can within the strengths we've got within the grouping. Um, I, I've, I'm, I will offer some assistance to the group and the leader of the group will be a um, Stuart Wilson, who's an independent councillor, I should be deputy in the group. And my primary purpose is this is to make sure that people's voices are heard. And when these challenges come up um, to the community, that's what we're there for. On Wednesday, we will find out, believe it or not, they even tonight at this 11th hour, they were not willing to divulge um, who the cabinet members are anywhere, like it's um, all going to wait for the Big surprise on Wednesday um, for council meeting, which will be a, um, a meeting of canaries. Um, we are all going into a public face meeting and we are, and I think if we survive the year um, of canary meetings, um, maybe government will start meeting in parliament. Um, who knows, in the similar vein. Um, but we're there for you. There will be contacts made in the official channels to the office um, as I say, it, it, it's primarily a functioning working group um, of like-minded people who are interested in social-minded issues and planning. There will be political decisions within that group, but we're not having whips and we're not telling people they can't say what they feel. Um, that's how it's going to be run, and um, which is great for me because that means I can say just what I ever like. Not that that would have stopped me anyway, but um, but um, it, it, it's there. So. If you have any questions, happy to take them out after the meeting. I don't think tonight's the appropriate venue for those questions, but um, obviously we will be writing to the Buckingham Society or I will put them in touch. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Stutchbury. So when's, this Wednesday is the first full meet, uh, meeting of the full council, yes? It's correct. It's going to be one of those stand up and applaud meetings where um, basically we'll be all surprised that all the chairs of committees are taken on by the Conservative Party and we'll gosh well, there's a lot of surprise and, um, and and it's a legal strategy meeting and they'll announce the proportionality of the committees the leader of the council will be announced upon us the cabinet members will be announced upon us and we'll be all surprised that they all come from the same party and um and then we'll proceed along the with the constitution we've inherited which is flawed which we amended 
briefly in the last window of opportunity in favour of planning committees, which I played some part in. And I think that with four years ahead of us and the Buckinghamshire plan will be started to be put together. This is going to be interesting times for us on planning. It's going to be interesting times for Buckinghamshire, let alone the challenge that we know which is in the place, which we've discussed um, the challenge from the government's development white paper, the Cambridge Arc, and all such things are going to feed into the way we do stuff. And, and it may even challenge Buckinghamshire Council's rights in the sense of determining their own first development plan, which would be really sad, won't it, irrespective of the politics, that the day that Buckinghamshire can do, can the first time that Buckinghamshire has to do a development plan and balance development all over Buckinghamshire against need social welfare, health, infrastructure, that the government may choose where those large developments go. We've discussed it endlessly in this committee and, and two accommodations the size of Milton Keynes, somewhere along the arc, possibly in Buckinghamshire, probably wasn't what we were requesting um, for us. And of course, as you well know, the, the infrastructure which they built that proposal on was called the Cambridge Expressway and that's now gone so I think we're going to be very busy on the council discussing these things but I think every parish in North Buckinghamshire, South Buckinghamshire and Mid Buckinghamshire is going to have an interest in this so I think as far as the planning committee goes on Buckingham Town Council I can't imagine you're going to have a dull time for four years uh, and our critical friends like the Buckingham Society, Beckham Society um, the Aldersbury Society and all these people are going to play an avid part in this because never before in, in our existence has the environment got such challenges before it and the democratic accountability of parish stroke Buckinghamshire Council going to be so challenged. So we're all going to have a voice in that. And I don't think it's a political voice. I think it's a voice for reason. So if that helps, it helps. But as you can imagine, I'm all fired up and raring to go. Um, Thank you very much, Robin. Anyone got any questions for our Shire Council here tonight? No. no just that, for what Ron has just been saying, it might be worth mentioning in our next um, interim council meeting, we will be looking for a representative to serve on the North Bucks Parish Parishes um, Planning Consortium. So have a think about that. Um, we will need someone to replace Paul Hirons. Paul did a really good job for us not only as a member, but as chairman for several years. So, mm -hmm. um, 11 to uh, application to be called in. We have none, Catherine. No. Thank you. And 11 three, an updated list of undecided oppose and attend call in applications. You've no doubt all seen the list that Catherine's done. It's worrying. It's now gone to three pages, hasn't it? So, anyone? Any you comments? haven't seen it. Yeah, Councillor Harvey. Well, this list will now be redundant, won't it be? Under the new constitutional change, we are now going to be allowed to go directly to the planning department and request that a, uh, um, a particular um, application is called in. We don't need to go via local councils anymore now, do we? I thought. We don't know. That, don't know. Do we? That's, it's Could I, can I help you with that? Ratified, yeah. <laughs> Robin? Can I uh, let me help you with that? What's been agreed is the change of, pra of practice. What has to be drafted now is the terms of reference for that change. Now, the terms of reference will be key to make sure the terms of reference for the engagement of town and parish council within the planning committee are in line with the wording of the recommendation agreed at council. So officers have got to draft those terms of reference because they didn't couldn't draft them in, vent in advance of the council agreeing at the last very last meeting that it was going to um, uh, 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 make a, uh, a political apology for the parishes being cut out of the meetings. Uh, so that will have to be drafted. And I my guess it will be June, July before we get sight of that. I think it's going to be something I'll follow up. Um, as for the historical call-ins, I note that one was by Councillor Tim Mills. Now, I think we need to establish whether those decisions taken in the previous 
go under that. The decisions they were taken, the call-ins will probably have to go forward as call-ins because they were taken on one legal parameter, parameters. What we need to establish is what we do with the call-in which Councillor Mills have got, the one that he had against him, because it was quite a major one. Now, it could be that Catherine's holding a pen up very wisely at me. Um, uh, she may have the answer to that question. Thank you, Robin. If I may, Chairman, um, Councillor Stutchbury has that already on his email. Yeah. The answer is that um, all call-ins will stand and they will be offered to all Shire members for the area when it comes to committee. Yeah. Don't all rush. So, so what you're saying is, even though one's called an application in, if it's seemingly a good idea, I'll have to compete to actually speak on it. You, you thinking I'm going to have a, a rush there, like um, of people uh, rushing well, to get to the dispatch box? Has has assures me that um, Councillor Mills left his um, reasons on paper with the file, so it's simply a question of taking over from him, I would imagine. Well, I I'll pick that up if necessary. Thank you very much. Okay. Um... Item 12 then, Buckinghamshire Council committee meetings. Obviously those two didn't take place because they were election week, but it also explains part of the reason that the list of opposed applications is growing longer and longer. Um, item 13, resumption of normal hours. Um, is members are asked tonight to discuss and agree, one, whether the planning clerk should continue to produce the overview of applications report for each agenda. Councillor Harvey? Well, I, I mean, I find them extraordinarily useful um, to, but I also appreciate it must take you quite a long time to put them together. I, I, and if, if you see it as being a part of your job to do this, obviously it was done during lockdown because it was in a way of proceeding in a, in a sensible fashion, but I would, I would like you to carry on doing it, but if, I fully appreciate it could be very time consuming as well. Thank you, John. Uh, Lisa. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think that they are incredibly useful, um, especially if there are councillors on, on planning committee, they can pick up this report, read in depth information without having to click every planning application link and trawling through the hundreds of uh, documents on planning portals. Um, so I believe that Catherine's happy to continue doing these reports. I do find them incredibly useful and would appreciate them continuing. Yeah, Catherine, can you just, um, are you happy to continue? Yes. As I, I said, because they now overwrite amended plans onto the originals, I do have at least my own source now of the originals. Yeah. That's part of the problem, of course, is once a plan has been approved, it, all the objections disappear, don't they, from the yeah. portal. So at least we've got that record. So mm. Thank you, Catherine. Robin. Just to say, paraphrasing what I was considering, they are invaluable. They are constructive, they're informative, mm -hmm. and they are professionally produced. And, and, and there's very little reason to counsel them unless you want to be less informed, less better advised and yeah. less professional. So on that basis, I think we should carry on. I find yeah. them really intuitive. Is everyone happy with that? Yeah. And if we could just say, Catherine, thank you very much for doing that. And uh, it is very much appreciated. Great help to all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 13.2 is whether the Monday afternoon briefing meeting should continue online for the time being or revert to an actual meeting perhaps in the chamber, but well, we had our briefing this afternoon, those, those of you who attended it. Um, Lisa? Yeah, again, um, my thought process is having to leave the house to go out to any meetings is tiring. So going out to a planning preview meeting and then coming back home and then having an evening meeting, it is, it, it is gonna be again tiring if that, if it does change. So if we can continue having them on Zoom, I would thoroughly appreciate it. Thank you, yeah. Uh, Robin? 
Uh, I think they're invaluable. Uh, and also, from being completely selfish, I can log into the meeting if I'm in Audrey, <laughs> High Wycombe, or uh, wherever I'm likely to be, if I'm free of that hour, where if I'd got to travel mm. back to that briefing, True. I wouldn't get back. So, uh, uh, and the information I learn in that briefing informs me about views and uh, uh, of the council, which is really what I should be listening to. So I think mm. they're invaluable. Thank you. Yeah, so everyone's happy to, with that then, that we will continue online for the time being. Thank you. Very good. Um, item 14, enforcement. Any new breaches to be reported? No, but if under that we could just raise some, I raised it at the briefing this afternoon, what is happening with enforcement? We don't get very much feedback about what's happening. We've got three here on Page Hill, two of them in Hilltop Avenue. We've heard nothing more about. Um, I know that Catherine has mentioned in a couple of places about um, one in, in the action that plan, for instance, she's put numbers on them. But generally, Catherine, what, why are we not getting more information from Buckinghamshire Council planning on these? They don't issue it. I mean, I can compile a list of all the ones that is, I haven't had a closure notice on, um, which will be everything we've reported since about 90, uh, since 2016. Um, and yes, one of their officers could be deputed to go through and at least say which ones are closed and can be archived, but there's no offering of such information. There's no means of telling us apparently when they have closed a, a case um, and that number can be deleted from our current records. There's just no information, no feedback at all. Yeah, I, I do recall in, sometime in the past when we asked this and, and Aylesbury Vale District Council as was told us that it was information that they couldn't give because it um, because of data protection, etc. But uh, I, I can't see what the problem is. I don't want to know the details of the case and what the mm. what the accused person said. Yeah. I want to know whether it's closed or not, really. Yeah. yeah. Or even a, a short progress report saying this is going to need a planning application. Um, we've yeah. asked for it, that kind of thing. Thank you. Councillor Stutchbury? We, see, we clearly need a road, a road bridge through this um, mm. position. Um, Clearly, it's it's less than sensible and not good practice to have a situation where we don't know whether the cases have been determined yeah. or not determined or still outstanding. So what I would suggest is um, I will work with Catherine in a week or so because I know the workload and the staggering of the meetings together are very close now. This isn't a question that's going to go away, but I need to work with Catherine on what the questions are and I shall have to follow them up because I'm I'm frustrated about the ones in Buckingham mm. um, and I could probably remember lots of these things if I sat down and scrapped my head. <laughs> I don't generally forget things but I am concerned we've got a situation because what we could get is something happening which is erroneous and damaging because it's not actually been followed up and enforced. There was a case many years ago, which probably predates everybody in the windows now, that Catherine will remind you where, apart from Caroline actually, um, where an application actually, after 10 years, became actually an application under the Glorious District Council, because it had never been actioned as an enforcement issue, so it became legally an application that was on the Tindrick Road um, near the river. So it actually got planning consent because of that. Now, so we don't really want that sort of thing happening again. So I, I think we need to do it properly and, and the question needs to be properly put and I'll, I, I will do it. And then we'll see if they don't answer me how, how, how I deal with that. Um, <laughs> um, um, I've got some ways of dealing with that. Um, so I think they might give me the answer. And if I get the answer, then I can give it to Catherine uh, and then it's something perhaps they should be updating all their shire councils on the progression. They've made lots of statements about how much more they're doing on enforcement. My fear is that they're probably doing a really good 
job compared to before on the current cases coming in, but it's the historical enforcement cases, which are the ones which they've probably not got to yet. Mm. And I I have met online, I can't think of the name now, because names isn't my strong point, um, but I have met the new enforcement officer who looked very enthusiastic, and I did say to her that um, I wish you all the luck in the world, um, <laughs> but you've got a mountain ahead of you, and I don't think she's, she was unsurprised, but they have got more resilience now because with Buckinghamshire Council, I think the enforcement team is going to be spread across Buckinghamshire in its totality going forward. So there may be more resilience in the future, but that don't get rid of the historical backlog of things. And we don't want an application being determined after 10 years just on a legal criteria that nobody actually enforced it, which was the case from the District Council on the Tindit Road. Uh, I can't remember the name of the actual application, it's the name, but I can remember the actual details of it because um, I don't remember names very well, but it was on the Tindit Road. If either Catherine or, or, uh, or Caroline can actually remember the application, it was adjacent to the river um, on the Tindit Road. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, of course, it's a little bit discourteous from, from their end because we are the, the ears and the eyes of enforcement in Buckingham. It tends to be us who makes the reports. We've heard that from Sue tonight. We've heard that from Anthony tonight. And if they don't uh, acknowledge that and reciprocate, you know, so something's wrong in the system. Isn't mm. it? Thank you anyway. Um, item 15, applications to fell trees. Councillors Harvey and Councillor Stutch, we no doubt be delighted to see Appendix G there, the last page in the planning agenda, showing the applications to fell trees protected trees and those in the conservation area. That, that's the list that Catherine has been keeping for us, which leads us to consider the proposal put forward by Councillor Ralph. Councillor Ralph, it's in your hands. Thank you very much. Well, as you can see from the list, my thought processes ran along the lines of, we talk a lot now about trees, both um, uh, husbandry and felling and the rest of it. And equally, it's clear from correspondence from Neil Passmore that he's constrained to some greater or lesser degree. And consequently, it seemed logical if we could ask him to come and talk to us about um, the, the whys and the wherefores of how he deals with these things, it would give us a, a much better picture. And while we were doing that, because the um, Environment Committee are obviously very interested in trees and other flora, um, we could invite them as well. And when I mentioned it last week to some colleagues in the Buckingham Society, there was some interest shown if the um, invitation could be extended to them. And as I teased everybody this afternoon, if we ask any more people, we may have to hire um, the Albert Hall to uh, accommodate everybody. But I was only joking because I, I see it as a Zoom meeting um, uh, for convenience. And I, could I just ask the town clerk if we would be allowed to record that and then have that available should we want to show other new councillors as time goes on? Yeah, no reason why not. Thank you. That's my thought anyway. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, Robin? I think that with Anthony and yourself, that we need to structure that meeting very, very carefully in the sense that I can remember going to meetings in the past in Buckingham where the likes of myself, district and Buck or, or Buckinghamshire councillors will stand up and ask questions at those meetings, which actually prevented the very people the meeting was in, therefore, to actually ask some questions. So, though I'm on the committee, I think we the people we invite, we can tell them the meeting's taking place, but they can ask Neil Passmore all these questions any day of the week. Um, they've only got to pick their email up and, and or meet the officer and he'll meet them. So, we've got to make sure that it, this meeting's for the town council, and the Buckingham Society and not for Buckinghamshire councillors to join in and ask questions, which they can have facilitated elsewhere. And I, if it means I have to be quiet and let you all talk, so be it. Because um, uh, I've, I, I've always got something to say and I, I, I'm conscious that it's your meeting, um, not, not somebody else's. So though they can listen 
I don't think they should be part of the questioning because if, they, if they're any good as a counsellor, they would have realised they can ask questions anyway, elsewhere if they want to, not use your forum to do it. So that's my advice. And, but don't exclude them from the meeting because uh, then they'll say, you never invited me. But I don't think they should be part of the questioning of this meeting. It should be yours. And, and, and if I have to be quiet, so be it. Thank you, Robin. Yes, I, I, I assume what Anton is aiming at is it, it would be Buckinghamshire Town Councillors and Buckingham Society and any, any tree wardens who are not part of either of those groups. Um, I think Neil Passmore is, is the ideal person for this. He, he is local. Um, I've known Neil all his life, basically. He grew up at home farm at Foscot, where his parents farmed. Um, tenants of John Pass, uh, of um, John Pullen. And Neil has been very, very good for Buckingham. He's always been accessible. Um, if there's been any tree queries, any trees that have broken, need replanting, he's always been very much on the case. So we're very lucky that we do have someone like that who, who is at the heart of Buckinghamshire Council. So um, as Anthony says, I think we, we should use them if we can from that point of view. Lisa. Thank you. Um, my hand was up for the previous item, um, but I've got a point on both now. So it was going back to 14.1 and the list that we have, and it was something that um, John said earlier about reaching out to other bodies. Um, have I got it right that we were going to contact the Beaconsfield Society about trees to see if they were being felled in their area? And if so, has that been um, a follow through? Um, on this item 14.2, I didn't read in here that it was for Buckinghamshire um, councillors to ask questions, that it was for our working group, um, the Environment Committee members, if they wanted to come along, and the Buckingham so Society. So, um, you know, I think that if Mark chairs the, this meeting, I think um, that any Shire councillors that come along that aren't on the town council, I'm pretty sure he'll curb their, um, their questioning quite well. Thank you, Lisa. Robin? Uh, okay. Sorry, could I just ask, ask the town clerk first, Robin, and I'll come back to you. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, thank you, Chairman. Um, <laughs> yeah, j j just to note, obviously, we're talking about arranging something with Neil Passmore, who, been, who isn't here to agree with us. So whatever councillors get to, are you happy to kind of delegate to myself and Catherine to work out mm -hmm. a format and style for the meeting that Neil would be happy with the shimmies up for this? So we, don't, yeah. we can't kind of implement something too much. <laughs> Um, and it may well be that we need a bit more of an informal meeting with Neil to explain how things work. Mm -hmm. And then after that, if councillors are unhappy with the policy of Buckinghamshire Council, then it would be for councillors to kind of reconvene and then talk to Buckinghamshire councillors about policy that Neil obviously doesn't set. Yeah. Uh, um, Robin? Yeah, I mean, there are new opportunities here. I mean, we have got... We have access to people who are environmental experts now who are in the field who happen to be councillors um i was talking to one today and, and and i think that when it comes to this the way we deal with trees and the way we deal with applications we need to be less parochial and more proactive because i think going forward picking up what went on in chesham and a decision there contrary to what went on here like john's alluded to is going to be key because what we can't have them doing is applying one policy in mm. one part of Buckinghamshire and another in another. Because if the yeah. trees and the beaches in, in the Wickham Woods are important, so are the oaks and the limes in Buckingham, you mm. know, uh, and they shouldn't be getting any different appearance. I think it's a work in progress, but I think with the Beckinsville Society and maybe the Aldrich Society, I think it's about getting a collection of these people together mm -hmm. and maybe we need to get them to maybe meet and maybe talk how they want to go forward because we're never going to, as I said earlier, we're not going to have ever going to have the challenge that we're going to get in our lifetime again. And it's a, it's about finding friends everywhere and finding colleagues who can work. But I, I don't recall we, we we suggested having an action of contact to the Buckingham Society. I don't uh, at the Beckinfield Society, but I thought we were going to unless Caroline's going to correct me. I think the, the Beckinsale site and the Buckingham site were going to speak and it might have come back that way. 
Oh. I, I mean, that might have been the way it was going to go. Okay. Um, but I might be wrong on that. And if, if I have got that wrong, Caroline will love to correct me. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, we, 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 did, we did make contact, but there was nothing actually, no action was, was uh, forthcoming in, in the sense that we are in touch with each other quite regularly, in fact. But um, if you're suggesting that we should actually uh, find out what they're doing with trees, then, then let's, let's put, push that forward. Thank you, Caroline. Um, I'm sure it was, sorry, Chairman, but I'm sure it was action from one of our previous minutes that we were going to contact the Brickensfield Society, yeah. and it was about insurance companies applying for tree removals. Yeah. Yeah, right. So if we can leave that to Paul and Catherine then. To... Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much for that. Item 16, matters to report, any damage, superfluous, redundant signage, access issues, Councillor Harvey. I've Rob. been having several conversations today about because we've been it's been raining a lot in the last few days. There are still many many storm drains that are just not being cleared um, <laughs> since the Christmas flood, and because they're still gunged up with lots of mud and lots of jetsam, um, and also there is that tree down by the uh, uh, you know down by the Green Bridge at, at the back of the uh, of the car park the main car park, um, that these are all things that need attention and they're just not getting attention, they're not getting any priority. I don't know what TFB are doing. I don't know whether we can apply any more pressure. But, you know, for example, there's this flooding um, on the corner of Tindrick Road and, 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 and Nelson Street. Today I saw it myself. Um, there's still flooding around um, uh, Linden uh, and so on and other places too. You know, unless these drains are cleared, um, let alone the more, more radical action that Terry Cavender was telling us about at a previous meeting. We're going to get the same problem again if there's a lot of water. And clearly the weather is pretty unpredictable these days. We've got to do this now. And I frankly yeah. don't understand why Buckinghamshire Council aren't putting huge amounts of pressure on Anglian water to, to get this sorted. Or whoever is responsible, I assume it's Anglian water, they really ought to be getting this done. And it's mm. appalling. I know they're a profit-making organisation, but, you know, the service to the public ought to come first. Yeah, great. Thank you. Uh, Robin? If, if it helps, John, I mean, in some ways, Transport for Bucks have been... I've been working with them on a couple of things in a couple of villages about where they were flooded, and, and, and they, they have been... Um, the Environment Agency and such like have been involved. Um, they were Pacific issues. The drainage issues and sucking the gullies out, um, you, there's not enough of them gully trucks around Bucks to actually um, do it. You have to make an appointment for it. It comes up, does a load of work, and then disappears back safely to Martin Tech's constituency, I expect. But um, it, um, it probably parked there permanently. Um, but I'm just joking. I'm sure that wouldn't happen, would it? Um, no, um, I'm sure that doesn't happen. It's just a joke. Um, and uh, But but as for redundant and re when with signs, we do have an issue that about redundant signs. We have all the signs with Buckinghamshire County Council on them and all the signs with the um, Algevale District Council on them. Are they redundant or signs or are we going to be green and environmental and, and, and not, not seek to have some of them removed? Because I remember our great friend, Councillor Isham, if you remember... He was heartbroken when all the cast iron signs were removed in the town. And, and Derek, at the time, didn't want them removed, but they were all removed. With, and we had ticky-tacky, thin, aluminium or tin signs put up, saying exactly what the previous cast iron beautiful signs on the building said. So I think we have to be... Some of these signs are probably going to be better than what replaces them. So it might be worth... Having before they have a program of replacing them and, and signposting um, or everywhere in Bucks, whether we really want them to, to do that in Buckingham or whether we want to keep some of these signs because they are of historical significance. The decisions about those estates may have been taken before Buckinghamshire Council, and and, it, it, and we shouldn't have a year zero attitude to signage um, like happened when the district took over. They got rid of all the historic borough signs 
which were all removed. Um, I did return one of them to the old jail some years ago. It said, ladies and gents, toilets, the old jail. Um, I returned that personally to them because I felt that it, I had no use for it in my house. Um, and I was given it as a small child and I kept it. But I do think we need to just do some sort of audit on the thing, get a view how we do that. Because it would be environmentally friendly just to leave them up, wouldn't it? We'd save all the carbon of taking them down. It would save all the, the producing a new sign. And they're not going to say anything different. The only difference is it's going to say Buckinghamshire Council on them. So I think we ought to have a discussion about what we want with that redundant signs, whether they are really redundant or whether they're part of our evolved history of the community. It's just why I'll just say that, put that out there. I might be on my own in my thoughts on it, but um, I'm quite happy to be that. But we should discuss it in case somebody comes along and we find one day all the signs have, have gone and we've got plastic signs um, with Buckinghamshire Council and the blue I don't know why they came up with the colour blue for Buckinghamshire Council on the side. It must have been difficult for them to come up with the colour blue. But um, but um, there are lots of other colours they could have used, but they chose blue, didn't they? Um, but um, but anyway, that must have been a mistake. But um, but let's um, let, let's just discuss that. Some means whether it goes to the Environment Committee or the Buckingham Society come up with a view on it, so that if some change does happen, if we don't like it, we say we want to keep those signs. And I just, as I said earlier, I remember Councillor Isham bringing this up on more than one occasion of his great regret at losing all those lovely cast iron signs on our buildings. And let's not repeat the same thing again, what happened in 1974 in 2001, 2022. Thank you, Robin. Yes, that's, uh, that's all noted. Any other matters to report, uh, Carolyn? Oh, well, I'm not sure I was first, but... <laughs> I, I, I just want to bring this to the attention of this committee, uh, the condition of April Cottage on the uh, corner of, of the high street of where it leads up to the hospital. I can see Councillor Mahi nodding. It's a listed building and it is getting worse and worse. And we recall that Prebend House, after many years of deterioration, um, the conservation officer did force the university into finally doing something about it, which to their credit they did. Um, but April Cottage is, is an eyesore. Uh, it's broken windows and overgrown shrubs almost through the roofs now. It, it, I just felt that we should be aware of it and put it on the agenda. But I don't know who owns it. I don't know what enforcement can take place at this stage, but it is a listed building and it is deteriorating very badly. Thank you, Carolyn. Captain will have noted that. Uh, Councillor Try, Martin. Thank you. Um, there's a parking sign for Cornwall Meadows um, just on the T junction, coming from the old jail, is uh, near the floor rather than up on the post. Is that the one beside the Grand Junction? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, Councillor Ralph. Thank you, Chair. Um, whether this is strictly for this little section, but I'm going to push my luck and say a um, couple of things. The parking in front of the old town hall, I really wonder whether we could, uh, now we've got a new Buckinghamshire council, we could redouble our efforts to get that sorted out. Um, drop bollards or planters, however we do it, it really is a bit of an eyesore and it it really spoils the street scene at that end of the road. And just around the corner from there, we have double yellow lines outside the post office. And there are so many cars that park there, they rub the, sun, the uh, painting off the ground pretty well. And I wonder if, if at least we can get the uh, yellow lines reinstated with uh, another coat of paint. Um, and, and even perhaps a don't park here sign um, these are all sort of things that um, just make the, the town look gently deteriorating and it, it, it could do with sorting out. If we could just ask Catherine's advice on the old town hall. Um, much of it actually belongs to the old town hall, doesn't it? Um, some of it does. Um, there's a change in the paving 
Um, you can see one side and the other. I think what happened was there was originally a traffic order and county lost it so long ago they can't remember what it said. I mean, otherwise there wouldn't be the big words loading bay along the edge of it, you see, if there wasn't a traffic order. It's just that they haven't been able to locate one. Could I, could I help you with that? My understanding is that Councillor Warren White had suggested that there was going to be a traffic order sought to regularise that. Now, I can't speak for him, but the suggestion was made that that was going to be looked at. Now, it would need a new traffic order to actually sort the town or area out because of what you've said, Catherine. That might be why we're looking. Would it be worth us writing to him and asking him if it was correct that he was looking at this and if he if he was considering it, what progress he had made in it? I'm not trying to wrong foot him on this, but I do recall him mentioning something about it once. And on the issue of the redundant house, there was a neat bit of legislation took through by a forward-looking government in 2007, um, which was to force councils to take on um, the responsibilities of properties which were redundant and falling down. I don't remember the wording of the legislation. It might be worth Ca um, Caroline looking that up, because I think from my memory, there is legislation which you can go to the council and ask them to actually do it. Now, a planning authority has a statutory duty to look after listed buildings in its territory. No, I remember that well then, and I, but I didn't. The, but, they can serve an order on the owner to but do I so. Think that, that's I think something that, that we, could, we could probably pursue and ask them to do it under them grounds uh, um, with support of the Buckingham Society. Would that be a way forward of addressing it? Now, I can't remember the, the, the exact word in the app, but I remember it. Um, Catherine uh, has looked into that, Robin. So we, if, yeah, and um, I'll Thank take you. I'll take some photographs as well because photographs speak more than words do. Thank you, Councillor Harvey. I mean, right at the beginning of this section, I did raise the issue about putting some pressure on our local shire councillors for pressure on Anglian Water to sort out the drains, the storm drains, and so on. So could we do that? Could at least a letter go to our six um, Shire councillors um, and copy in Anglian Water saying, this is a matter that needs resolution soon. It's not one that can just hang around. The longer it leaves it, the more mud that gets in there, the more risk of flooding there is if it should rain again, like it did a few months ago. Thank you. I look that? forward to your email, the correspondent. Does everyone agree with that? Thank you, yeah. I have two... Um, items here one is the Borton Road roundabout on the A422 um, three of the four roundabout signs have now been wiped out by a traffic so obviously decided to go straight across I have reported it twice on my my street nothing's happened um, the other one is the bottom of Addington Road one of the new bollards has been knocked over already the, uh, the black iron bollards Almost off yep. the BP garage. I noticed I, that. I reported that several months back, Councillor Cole. Yeah, is this not another one? No, I don't think they repaired the one that was hor horizontal and shifted several feet sideways. Right. Okay. <laughs> I think That's somebody put it back. But um, uh, I'm not yeah. sure. Paul, have we still got a local area technician? Uh, we we did have last time I checked. Uh, we have we've certainly got the details for the local contact for TFB. Yeah, he still so have a local just... area technician. He, 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 he's corresponded with me um, in the past forty eight hours, so he's still there. Um, <laughs> and, and I won't use his name in public, but yes, he's still in the play, and he's got an assistance. And there's a third person who is assisting them in that. So, what the local air technician problem is, they haven't got the resources to hand to do what he wants to do which means he gets all the requests to do something but he, but he hasn't got the resources what he has to do is get it into a program of work i'm not making excuses for them that's just the reality of what it is but he has been um he got i asked him to do two areas of work on the bypass if you notice the two areas which have been re-tarmacked the one adjacent to the badgers estate 
and one on the other side where the plane and patch have failed. And I managed to get him to do that um, during the election. Um, so um, he got on and got that done because of noise. So he is getting stuff done because that was in a scheme where the, it was a failed job where the um, where they'd done it and it had definitely not come up to match so that could get done. What we've got problems there is because it's actually got, got to be signed off and they've got a warranty on it. So I think um, let's not abuse the Eau Claire technician. He's our friend. What he hasn't got is the resources he needs to do his job. That's ju that is the question you need to ask your Buckinghamshire councillor. Are you going to get the resources to him to be able for him to do what he needs to do? Yeah, I was just wondering whether it would be more effective to go straight to him rather than go through Fix My Street. Yeah. Um, you'll get told which is the oh you've got to put it through the fix my street model and 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 then they'll get a letter uh which i get i ignore those letters of course i do but um but i i think that that you can put it through fix my streets and i think the one that mark said that it, if it's coming off one of the problems i've had with fix my streets and i don't know if it's just me that quite often it was their case is resolved and it jolly well isn't resolved. It's just just been resolved because nobody's done anything. So on the Borton Road one is it the little roundabout, Mark? Yeah, the mini roundabout. Yeah. Um, I am. I don't tend to go out that way. My boys do. I don't because I tend to do my journeys different. But but I I think we'll have to have. I'll, I'll try and look tomorrow at that if it's not raining again. Thank um, you. And see if I can get anything. I'm not guaranteeing you, but I, it's been very good to me recently. Um, mending work on the bypass going up to the Bletchley roundabout those two areas he got done for me which I was really great about and because I'm such a good bloke I didn't then go out on on um, out and do a press release about it during the election um, saying that I'd managed to get two areas of tarmac done during the election I thought that during Perder I shouldn't do that but I don't think Buckinghamshire Council had the same decency I think they did quite a lot of press releases during the election didn't they but um but obviously that was not in breach of Perda, was it? Um, but anyway, uh, we'll, 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 we'll do our best for you, Mark. No guarantees for this. It's not an exact science. Right. OK, item 17, Chairman's items for information. I have none except to um, thank uh, the Mayor for being with us tonight. Margaret, thank you for attending, seeing how really, really efficient committee works. <laughs> um, date of next meeting to decide whether to hold the next meeting on the planned date of Monday the 7th following the interim council or whether to hold it the following night by Zoom. Uh, we had a quick round robin at the briefing today. Lisa? Yeah, I would opt for the Zoom meeting on the Tuesday um, because it's going to be on Zoom. Thank you. Um, John? Mm -hmm. I've got an avalg meeting on that Tuesday, so if it happens on the Tuesday, I will have to give my apologies because I've, I've said I'm going to go into the avalg meeting. So I, as we're all going to be up there for the um, interim, I, I personally see no reason why we shouldn't just carry on with a planning meeting that like we've done in the past. But I'll go with the majority, of course. I, I can't do Tuesday. Yeah, I think our problem is going to be one of practicalities if we hold it at the. Lace Hill Centre because we won't have big screens. We won't necessarily be able to get hold of internet signals to, to do what we need to do. Um, Paul, could we just check with you? Is, it, is there anything against doing that? Uh, so there there is a big screen at Lace Hill. One of the screens is up there at the moment. Um, and there's enough internet, certainly for us to be able to put the um, images up on the screen as we have done in the past so that would be possible up there but obviously the committee would be able to move in because there's a lot less of us than interim council so it would be a bit more intimate and practical um, so it can be done um, and there's, not, there's nothing against holding a zoom meeting as, as long as we're still um, planning working group is that correct that, yeah that's absolutely correct obviously we need to make sure we'd be core for the meeting but apart from that Right, so Lisa, you, you're making a proposal that we hold it on the Tuesday night. Can we have a seconder for that? No, no. second. Okay, so in that case, uh, Robin? Robin? I'm going to second Lisa's proposal so we have a vote on this rather okay. than, you know, because I, I, I listened to Lisa's reasons about getting 
whatever to a meeting and and and, and I, I i did empathize with what she was saying earlier about you know having to whatever so i think we need to have a vote on that because we need to make sure that these meetings are as interactive as we possibly can and we are understanding orders agreed at council to be able to do these zoom meetings and and it and, and the, the only downside of it is officers rushing back to where they've got to do to do the Zoom meeting. So I can imagine they can do it from where they were in Laysil if they had to. Um, day, Robin. Yeah, so we do it on the foreign day, at least I said. Uh, I'll second her proposal. Thank you. So could we put that to the vote then? All those in favour that we hold it on Tuesday the 8th of June at 7pm via Zoom. All those in favour? Just me and Robin. Oh. oh. <laughs> One, two, three, four. I make that. Those against? One, two, three. Three and abstentions. One abstention. One. So that's carried. We do hold that meeting then on Tuesday, the 8th of June at 7 pm. That's a good job you had a vote then, wasn't it? Thank you, chaps. Thank you very much, everybody, for that. And thank you to our <laughs> thank, you to, thank you to Sheena, who we haven't heard a word from tonight, but she's yeah. been here very recently. Thank you to Nina. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you very much, Paul. And um, we'll see you.